right. So I'm going to start with a, a very controversial statement, and the statement is this. Human memory is on the verge of becoming antiquated. For the last 200,000 years, human memories work kind of the same way, right? You see something, you hear something, you sense something by touch, that input comes in and it gets encoded against a bunch of neurons so you can remember it. And the more that you experience something, the more that you recall it, and the more emotionally intense that thing is, the more you're likely to remember it. And the same works in reverse as well. The less you experience it, the less emotionally intense, and the farther away it is, the less you're likely to recall it. And if you think about it, this kind of makes sense, right? You're walking down the street one night, and you get and you happen to get mugged, you probably want to remember that the next morning, right? Whereas some cocktail party from nine years ago, not quite as important. Human memory is a very contextual thing, right? Like you can just recall something, but generally it's it's driven by context. If you walk by a building, you have a vague recollection of being at a cocktail party from years ago. If you see a face, you rec vaguely recollect meeting that person at a cocktail party years ago. It's a, a vague recollection based on context. But what if it didn't have to be vague? What if it could be actually perfect? Just like in Harry Potter, you could literally jump back into a memory and see that, per that memory in literally perfect detail. This is like a science fiction-like idea, but it's actually driven in some fact. Um, and it kind of goes back to the 1970s. A guy named Gordon Moore was the founder of Intel, and he, came, he started noticing that his microprocessors were doubling in speed every 12 to 18 months, and you could actually plot it on a perfect exponential curve. And if you fast forward 15 years later, this guy, Ray Kurzweil, noticed that this curve actually applies to not just microprocessors, but all information processing and storage going all the way back to the beginning of time and the abacus. And what's cool about this is because it's a perfect mathematical curve, you can actually make predictions in the future. And that's exactly what Kurzweil did. In 1990, he predicted that in the year 2000, a computer would beat a human at chess. And it happened in 1997. So, what does this have to do with memory, though, right? Like, human memory hasn't changed in years. It's a flat curve, right? Well, what if it's actually not a flat curve? What if we're just on the flat part of an exponential curve? And that sounds a little crazy, right? Like, human memory is going to go exponential. But there's actually some proof to support this idea that we're at this major inflection point right now and things are about to change. So I'm not going to go into a ton of detail, but I'm the co-founder of a product called Memoir. And what Memoir does is it sucks in every photo that each user has ever taken on their phone, on their laptop, in Facebook, and in Instagram, and in Twitter, wherever it is. And what's cool about this is we have this gigantic amount of data on a tremendous number of users. And we've actually put data scientists in charge of analyzing it. And what they've figured out is that the number of photos and videos people are taking is actually growing at a perfectly exponential rate the same rate as that curve that I showed you before from Ray Kurzweil. And what's interesting is that in the year 2014, the average person was taking one photo every 3.5 seconds. But what's more interesting is that if you plot this out to the year 2020, the vast majority of all of our lives is going to be completely covered by photo and video. And it's not just the capture technology that's advancing at this rate, it's also the, uh, the consumption technology. So imagine walking down the street in 2020 and you pass a building, and not only does a memory pop up and say, do you remember when you were here at this cocktail party nine years ago, but the same thing works for faces, places, people. And this isn't like a pie-in-the-sky technology. Software today already does this. Memoir already knows where you are, who you're with, what's going on, and can play memories back to you. But the really powerful thing about augmented memory is that when memories become digital, they inherently become collaborative. So every single photo you take is geotagged. And what that means is computers can not only recreate your memory in perfect detail from your perspective, but from all of your friends' perspectives as well. It's like assembling a giant jigsaw puzzle of human memories using everybody's memories in the history of time. And so, you know, this sounds kind of like a scary, creepy idea, but like all tools, this is something that like is designed to suit human needs, and tools that don't suit human needs end up going away and end up being, being the dodo. So why is this so like awesome and amazing to me? I'll leave you with one anecdote that kind of, to me, encapsulates the power of augmented human memory. <clears throat> Imagine in 40 years you're sitting with your grandchildren, and they look up to you and they say, Grandma, what was it like to meet Grandma? And instead of trying to describe it to them, you say, let me show you. Thank you.